In the previous video, we were looking at the uh, the gas laws being Boyle's law, Charles law, and Amontin's law, uh, where we're keeping the quantity of the gas constant the whole time, and then either keeping temperature constant, uh, where we saw pressure was inversely proportional to volume, or keep the pressure constant, where volume is proportional to temperature, or keep the volume constant, where pressure is proportional to temperature. With the ideal gas law, uh, it's basically just going to combine all of those. So the gas laws can be combined um, into one law, and basically it's sort of the, the more complete version of those um, gas laws. Um, and we can sort of see that uh, if we look at this, once we've put it together, um, when we keep one of the quantities constant, then the other um, the other relationships uh, for um, Boyle's law, Charles law, and Amontin's law uh, fall out from that um, that this equation. So um, it's known as um, the called the way that the uh, the syllabus refers to it is the equation of state of an ideal gas. Now, as I said, it's just literally a a, um, a combination of those laws previously. So with the uh, the gas laws, we were looking at the fact that the quantity of gas was constant. So with Boyle's law, Charles law, and Amontin's law, um, n is constant. So we need to um, just uh, mention here as well that if um, we were to keep um, uh, the uh, P and T constant, um, what we'll then see is that we can, if we start to change the uh, number of moles, um, then the volume of the gas is going to be directly proportional to the number of moles. So pressure and temperature being constant, we're not changing those. Um, so if we double the amount of gas that we're going to be dealing with, then the volume of that gas will also double. So this uh, this idea of um, the number of moles of the gas can now tie into these um, these uh, gas laws to uh, help us with the uh, equation of state of an ideal gas. Now, if we um, start to look at um, some of the relationships that we saw in the previous video, so volume being proportional to temperature and pressure being proportional to temperature, we can basically combine those two and identify that pressure times volume uh, will be proportional to the temperature. Uh, we've also seen though that the uh, the volume is proportional to the number of moles of gas, so we can then, uh, if all of these quantities are, are variable, uh, we can then sort of expand that even further and identify that PV is going to be proportional to the number of moles multiplied by the temperature. Um, so that uh, is sort of the, the relationship that we're interested in. We can then um, turn that into an equation simply by adding a, um, a constant of proportionality. So the relationship for the uh, equation of state of an ideal gas is simply that PV is equal to nRT. So that's the, uh, the equation that's in the data booklet. Um, and the, uh, the value R here is the, the constant of proportionality. Uh, it's usually expressed in that order. Um, basically sort of alphabetically I guess um, uh, but that's the uh, the most common way to that you'll come across it uh, as we've already seen P is the pressure um, in Pascals um, the volume V is uh, measured in cubic meters uh, be careful if you are given volumes in say cubic centimeters or cubic millimeters uh, you need to make sure that you do convert them back to cubic meters, uh, so just be careful of that conversion. Um, N is the quantity of gas, or the number of moles of gas, uh, so it's quantity of gas in moles, and again we'll have a look in more detail at what moles are um, in a subsequent video. T is the temperature of the gas, uh, measured in Kelvin. So it needs to be an, an absolute temperature scale. And lastly, R is the ideal gas constant. And that has a specific value. It's one that you can look up in the, the data booklet. Uh, R is equal to 8.31 um, joules per Kelvin per mole. Uh, so like I say, it's the, the constant of proportionality that um, that ties all of those quantities together. As I mentioned, um, we can sort of look at that relationship, and I'll just briefly do it here. 
uh, whether you want to take notes about this or not, I'll leave up to you. Um, but if we take that re that um, equation, first of all, we've we've identified that r is a constant. Um, if we keep n constant the whole time, and let's say we keep t constant, then this right hand side becomes a constant. So PV is equal to some constant k, which in this case would be nRT. Um, and so we can see then that um, uh, we could write that P is equal to k over V. And we know that sort of tracking that backwards, P is proportional to 1 over V. So there's um, uh, Boyle's law. Uh, we could do a similar thing with um, uh, if we keep, uh, so PV being equal to nRT again. Um, again, we're keeping n constant, r as a constant. If we keep P, uh, V as a constant in this case, um, we could take that and sort of rewrite it as P is equal to n r over v multiplied by t. So this would now be the constant value. So p would be equal to kt, or in other words, p is proportional to t. Um, and then finally, um, uh, rewriting that again, p equals n r t. If uh, n's constant and p is constant, similarly, we'd have v is equal to n r over p. So there's the, uh, the constant terms uh, being equal to t. Um, so V is equal to KT, and therefore V is proportional to T. So you can see there the, um, the gas laws all are basically just specific examples of the, um, the ideal gas equation. Uh, again, I just need to mention this in passing. These, value, these quantities of K here are just to indicate the constant of proportionality. Um, we won't be using that as a particular value for this scenario, um, just using it to indicate that... Um, that there is a constant of proportionality for each of those relationships. So just a bit of a disclaimer there. Uh, in the next video, as I said, we'll have a look at um, uh, some of the properties around moles. Um, so looking at the quantity of a gas and how that relates to the mass of the gas as well. So uh, that's in the next video.